cause some problems, but of course we're going to see how it pans out. Coming into the second phase here, we have the Ruby, the Hayabusa band out as well. Rebellion Zombie. with the Lolita and the Ling. So we can already see that both of these teams are starting to respect ban one another, right? The Ruby taken away from Wijanarko, one of his power heroes. It also goes against the composition that Aura Fire wants to bring out. It might be a potential stress factor Ooh. for Claude. But as you can see here, the Cho pickup for Aura Fire. A great hero that can just go for those big pickoffs, facilitate the early game clearing as well. In a way, the clear is almost as good as the Lolita that Rebellion has banned away. But they banned away that Ling as well. So I guess they believe that the Fredrian will not be going into the jungle. But keep in mind, we talked about very strong heroes available in the hands of Fluffy. So if it's flexed out here, Rebellion will get caught off guard as they have two more heroes to round out their composition. So far, it's pretty solid pressure in the, both the side lanes. Now, can they secure something for Ouija to actually enable the rest of the team to be aggressive? The jungler is going to be a Martis. Solid pickup here for Rebellion Zion. The Martis, when they already have two very squishy heroes, they need another... Whoa, wait! Wait a minute. They need another front line was what I was going to say. Then I saw the Lapu pick. That makes sense. Then you take into account that, hey, they've already picked up the glue. The so glue? It should be a Rome glue. I don't think I've ever seen a Rome Lapu work that well. And Orify oh. round up their drafts with a Paquito pick. So it is going to be Fred. Execution will come out on top as we enter the portal for game number one, match number one. Rebellion Zion and Aura Fire. Oh, we're seeing it already. Weijin Arco putting the pressure down onto Godiva, oh. forcing a flicker out. Might actually be going for more here with another flicker. Sway low picks up first blood in the mid lane with the help of Weijin Arco's crazy aggression early on on the glue presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy S23 5G. Yeah, that's what glue Rome does. That is what glue does in general. If you don't if you're moving backwards, he excels. And in the Rome game, in where the early game engagements are so all in, in a way, Ouija just abuses that blue pick. And with the Avarice, also gains a lot of gold in the process. So already an off meta pick, as we mentioned. And Vincent's on that Martis with the Demon Slayer. So we can, we're going to expect a lot of jungle contest here. But of course, he's up against High, also on the Fredrin with a Demon Slayer. And I think it's just going to be such an aggressive game because Godiva here, for now, is going to be out damaged, out pressured by Ouija. But once he reaches level four, he will have more chances to make those big game changing plays. This is why. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Ooh, Waylo, is he going to be okay here? Should be, right? Should Fluffy be? just going in for a little bit of poke damage. Maybe you can call it just burst damage because Swaylo <laughs> was taken quite low there. Uh, pops to regen, and now they're gonna go for it actually all the way, committing under the turret. Swaylo falling, and Aura Fire picks one kill up on the board again. Rebellion Zion, though, not staying still just yet. Going on to the turtle with high, stunned up with hit damage down. Car's gonna be able to dish out so much to take the kill over slain. with the turtle secure as well. Two minutes in, and Rebellion are doing really well. They are, they are. They're definitely leading here. They're timing things really well, but in the mid side, we did go. Gonna be taken down here. Oh, that's a man. lot of damage. Both these teams are just going head to head, and honestly, the Romans are just so aggressively going at it. But I think the pressure is still on Godiva. He needs to try and get the perfect, the more decisive way of the dragons because otherwise Ouija does not rely on that ultimate he can just go in and out in and out again and again and it's just so oppressive it's a style that really suits rebellion zion and their need for aggression that's why when i looked at the patch notes it said nerf to glue and i understand right that early game is kind of weakened a little bit but not as much but on the top Ooh, side here fluffy gonna get taken down Oh man, we're just seeing a lot of miscalculations happening for Aura Fire as they are going for a lot of these skirmishes without actually going for any setup. Meanwhile, in their own lanes, maybe stepping over, extending a bit too much on their comfort heroes. Sure, the Lapu wins up against the, uh, well, sorry, the Paquito actually wins up against the Lapu early game. But once Cars gets to that level four, the Bravest Fighter actually gets him to a pretty okay standing with the Paquito when it comes to all in. Straight, sure. You still lose, but when you get those all-ins, 
with someone like a Lunox, that's when it gets crazy. We can go for some more here in the mid lane. High jumping in. That's a split split by Regenarco onto High. Looking for more as Godiva's gonna be able to pop in that Shun Poo. Disengage from the team fight. Both teams going at it. And as you mentioned, I think Aura can actually use this Paquito pick a bit more decisively. Usually we see the Paquito get ahead in lane solo, and then Fluffy goes around and becomes a huge problem for everyone else on the map. But now with both teams roaming towards the EXP lane, it just makes it easier for Rebellion to utilize the better team fight, the better AoE to try and get ahead. And in the gold lane, both gold lanes can just clear, but look at this damage coming in. Car super low, the Bravest Fighter, Godiva, is able to knock three up, but it's not going to be able to find anything more there. It's going to be Vincent who finds the Retribution on the turtle. Facehugger stealing the Brilliance away, but Tarz is still way too tanky, still surviving, even baiting Facehugger in as Vincent jumps in with a decimation, and he comes in again to finish the kill off. Vincent so low, but high is immobile under the turret. Swaylo is massive and high is gonna be jumped oh. on again. Brought back for Swaylo to pick up a killing spree. Rebellion 3000 gold lead. Oh, beautiful, beautiful team fight by Rebellion Zion. And I gotta say, this Lunox pick up by Swaylo was just beautiful, right? Aura Fire, they're trying to go in with front. And unfortunately, because of the passive from the Lunox, it's just not gonna happen. They get shredded. What's going on here, Rashi? The Lunox, the, the proactive early game Lunox pick is just so deadly. And with your narco, he's not done yet. He's going in. The dynamic duo with Swaylo. Oh man, the split split. Swaylo even jumping in there onto the back. Kabuki's gonna be able to find one. Swaylo oh. is pinned down, has the brilliance. Will they be able to get out of this one? Swaylo has the flicker, not gonna be able to use it just yet though. And that's gonna be actually a trade back. It's all just a bait. Base oh, is gonna be slain no. under the turret with the decimate as Vincent pops the recall in. Highs picks the turret back up. And now we're gonna take a look at the items because Rebellion, they've been able to chain these events so well into each other. And Aura Fire have not had the opportunity to respond to any of these plays. You're gonna say the glimpse of the items, but you can definitely be sure that Rebellion Zion with this kind of tempo, with 3.7k gold lead, they are actually going very aggressively as Vincent gets the Sky Garden helmet. So he's gonna be a lot more oppressive and moving along. And look at High going for the Radiant Armor, trying to make sure that Sway Low does not get out of control. Four and, four and one earlier, and now four and two. But it doesn't matter. If he just trades evenly, this is a Lunox that scales so well in the late game. And with everyone occupied with Wijanarko, with uh, cars on that left battle, he has so much space to maneuver around and output that damage. And look at the mid lane. Again, the Bravest Spider baiting out the IMU. Godiva with a defensive way of the dragon. You know it's not a good time when the Cho, your roamer, has to use his ultimate defensively. High right now is two levels below of Vincent. Cars is going to be able to zone high away, and if they don't, they're going to be caught here. Rebellion doing a very good job playing around the neutral objective. Not really winning in the lane, only getting the Bloodlust Axe several seconds ago. So this EXP, the strong EXP lane that has always been the backbone of Aura and their maneuvers is not available and Godiva, to make things worse, is falling behind, constantly getting picked off by the members of Rebellion. And with five members here, it's gonna be way too difficult. And Godiva was looking for a way to dragon onto someone, but it's just unfortunate. He is not gonna be able to find it just like that. So many members are clumping up together in Rebellion Zion's composition. And at this point, they can really just stick together. They already got their power spikes on highs and sway low as early as eight minutes. And this is your time to completely just take over the game through mid control. This is Aura Fire big brain time, right? Because usually when they fall behind like this, Kabuki is the one that's active on the map. And that's exactly what he's doing. But what is, wait a minute. Hi no. here. Hi. With the appraiser's wrath, you're tanky on the Fredrin, but not that tanky to withstand the Lunox and a Beatrix. So keep in mind though, this is what we've been talking about. Kabuki having macro awareness, split pushing in the side lanes, being a complete nuisance and still getting a decent amount of gold. He has reached his power spike with the golden staff and if Rebellion Zion is not careful, you're gonna lose more and more objectives, more turrets, even though they are 5k gold ahead. And of course, the threat of that back door is always looming in the back of their heads, but Rebellion still push that tempo. Luigi again, isolating Godiva for the taking there. Ooh. The snipe not just connecting, 
but Heiz is going to be able to rotate down below. Again, it's perfect timing for them getting Godiva low so that he can't really open up towards the Lord that's spawning just right now, as you can see from the Lord camp presented to you by Samsung. I mean, at this point, right, even if Godiva was there to open up the map, I mean, Heiz already has the penetration to do so. So it doesn't seem like at this point Aura Fire is in a position to be able to contest the Lord. So that is going to be a free Lord for Rebellion Zion. And I'm just questioning a lot of things happening on the board right now. What is with the Paquito pick? I know Paquito was buffed, but compared to how strong other choices of side lanes are, I do believe that the, that the Paquito is situational. Like, you would choose the Paquito against someone like the Benedetta in lane. I honestly think this is just a, a case, a rare case, where we see Aura Fire just get completely outdrafted. I don't think the problem was with the Paquito. The Paquito was just like, I think the Benedetta could have been the better choice here with more mobility. Fluffy could have joined more team fights early on. But I think the main problem with the draft lies in the mid lane. No mid pressure. Remember, Lunox was picked up pretty early up against that Valentina, but they decided to go with Cho instead of something just with more map or mid control in that wave department. Maybe something like a drop to help with the Lunox crazy dominance in lane. It's just impossible for them to rotate across the map and get that Paquito rolling from the start because the Paquito is a full snowball hero at this point in the XP lane. He needs to win that laning phase. If Kars gets to level 4 before he can get a lead, it's over and we're seeing it here. And I think it's just also all fire, not really playing to the advantage of the Paquito. We saw that they weren't allowing Fluffy to get that very dominant, very aggressive 1v1 situation. So now they need a huge combo, but the space of the Dunzan is way oh. too good. Sway low with the Ruby DD combo. It's follow through with the brilliance, but Tars flickers forward with the stun. It's a Wombo combo up in the base of Aura oh. Fire. Cracked open like it's nothing. 10 minutes. No, make it 11.